teeth, tongue, and spit. Okay, so on this page we're just going to learn a little bit about um, the mouth and its role in digestion. So um, to begin with, let's look at the different kinds of teeth. Um, there are incisors, and since we're looking at this from the side, you can see one of the um, central incisors and one of the lateral incisors. These are just, you hear the word scissor in there. They're good at cutting food. So you have four of these on the top. So two central on top and two lateral. And then also on the bottom, a couple more incisors. So you've got two of those, and these are often the first teeth to come in on a baby. On both of my boys, um, their lower incisors came in before their uppers, but of course there's all varieties. But in general, these are going to be the first teeth that come in on a baby, somewhere around six months. Uh, some babies get them earlier than that, some babies much later, and it's all good. Okay, then you've got the canines. So two on the top and two on the bottom. And as you can see, they're going to be good at tearing food. Then behind those, are the premolars, or the cuspids, um, find another color here. And um, these will also come in on a baby eventually. So you've got um, two of these. And so if you add these up, then they've got four of these and then four of these for eight, plus four more is 12, plus four more is 16, and then they get one more pair of bicuspids. So for a total then of 20 teeth will come in on a baby. So um, actually, I'll just go ahead and do it like this instead of separating them out. So four premolars um, on the top and then four on the bottom. So then if we add them up again, you've got eight plus four is 12, plus four more is 16, plus four more is 20. So 20 baby teeth come in. Then they lose all their baby teeth and their big ones come in. And my goodness, those can be a little scary at first. Um, also my eight year old, when his um, big gigantic front incisors came in as his adult teeth, I'd always have to do like a double take because they look so different from their cute little baby teeth. Um, and then when they get their adult teeth, then of course, with, you know, you've probably heard of the 12 year molars. And they'll get those. And just because it says 12 year doesn't mean they're going to get it right, you know, right at 12, somewhere in that vicinity. Um, and then they'll get um, another pair of molars when they're teenagers. Uh, and then if you are very lucky, you might be able to fit in a third pair of molars called the wisdom teeth, which I haven't even drawn on this face because so few people successfully fit those in their mouth in the U.S. anymore. So these are the molars and um, you're going to have two upper, or so four, four upper and four lower for a total of eight. 
and then plus possibly uh, you know a total of four more I had my wisdom teeth taken out when I was I guess 19 and um, mine were impacted, meaning they never even came out of the bone of my jaw. They were like laying sideways. So it was a pretty, um, you know, big surgery and uh, super hard to recover from. But then my husband has hit, had his out when he was about 24 and he had no problems at all. So if you have your wisdom teeth removed or they never even come in or you don't even have them in the um, bone to begin with, then you'll end up with 28 adult teeth. And if you keep your wisdom teeth, then you'll end up with 20 or 32. So 28 or 32 adult teeth, depending on if you have your third set of molars. And um, then of course I was mentioning that babies, uh, 20 baby teeth are replaced by 28 or 32 adult teeth. Okay, so then let's talk about um, saliva. So saliva is um, produced by uh, three sets of salivary glands. The sublingual and the submandibular. So you have a total of six salivary glands. The parotid is by the ear. Oops, by, sorry about that, by the ear. The sublingual is under your tongue. Can you gleek, or however you spell that word? You've probably seen people that can uh, squirt saliva out at you from under their tongue. It is a special gift to have, and it comes out of those sublingual salivary glands. And then the submandibular are a little more lateral than that. So there's the six pairs of um, salivary glands, and they are um, controlled by um, the uh, several different, or two main, sorry, two main cranial nerves, the glossopharyngeal, and the facial, I should have done those in the other order, but so. And remember this would be parasympathetic, would stimulate the production of saliva, saliva. And sympathetic will cause a dry mouth. It will inhibit the glossopharyngeal and the facial nerves from um, releasing saliva. And so that's what I have up here for these nerves. A couple of motor nerves coming down from the brain um, to control the salivary glands. And also uh, to control the tongue. So the tongue is powered by the hypoglossal nerve, which is the twelfth one. You can see it comes from up and under the tongue. And then uh, the cranial nerves seven and nine are the two primary ones that contribute to saliva production. Then we have sense of feeling on our teeth that is um, provided by the trigeminal nerve. Oops, this is going to be sensory. And you might remember the trigeminal nerve has three branches. The ophthalmic gives you a sense of feeling. Um, up higher on your face and around your eye, and then um, the mandibular gives you sense of feeling on all the teeth on your upper jaw, and then the um, 
mandibular, did I say mandibular? Maxillary up here, and then the mandibular branch of the trigeminal will give you feeling down below. So if you have dental work done on the upper part of your mouth, then they would try to do a local numbing of the sensory action potentials that would be fired up the ma maxillary branch. And if you have mouth work done on the bottom, then they would try to do local numbing um, to inhibit action potentials from being fired up the mandibular branch. And because you have the trigeminal on both sides, they can actually numb just the right side of your face or just the left side of your face.